Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this um, second um, spotlight of the Living Systems Collaboratory uh, of this uh, afternoon. Uh, if you are in, in the West Coast, like we are, uh, or whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world, uh, from where you're watching, um, we're super excited to be introducing you to uh, some of uh, the collaborations and revolutionaries uh, of the Living Systems Collaboratory, uh, which is a side program of the Design Science Studio uh, in collaboration with uh, UC Irvine, uh, and thanks to the generous donation of Mansur Vakili. Um, we've been for the last four months uh, just uh, mentoring and scaffolding three incredible artists who have have been uh, learning a little bit more about living systems and, and, and this idea that everything is connected and that we, we are a living organism composed of many other living organisms and we're as well part of a broader living organism that is uh, this spaceship Earth uh, in which we travel through space every day. Um, I'm really, really happy to introduce you uh, to Laura, uh, which I'll bring here. Uh, with me, uh, Laura is a is a TED fellow. Uh, she is a NASA data now. She has worked for uh, the U.S. government, advising them on, on technological affairs, and she's uh, one of the smartest people I know. So I'm really really happy to have been able to to give her some tools to to put together uh, or to get out of her mind some of the brilliant projects that she's working on and that she will share with you. And and I'll just uh, leave you to her because it's worth listening to her for as, as much time as we can. Thank you, Laura, for being here. Hi, and thank you, Nico. Hi, everybody. Um, as I've listened to so many amazing presentations this week, I, I think I'm like a lot of you, or I think I'm not alone in this, that I, on a, I personally keep trying to restate and, and refine and shrink down to sort of a wise haiku, my, my own life purpose. And for a long time, I would have said that it was to promote or evangelize around the concept of systems thinking. And that's still true. And then I was really pleased with myself because I'd shifted it to, I'd refined it down to, now I'm gonna build interdisciplinary tools. Okay, <laughs> I nailed it. But the, but the farther I go and, and, and the time in, in this collaboratory has really helped me refine it even more. And, and I, I think if today, today, my life purpose, if I, have to, if I had to state it, would be to support um, and provoke critical thinking and useful debate. And part of that is specifically creating scaffolding for um, varied applications of systems thinking. Um, I'm personally especially interested in the problem framing side um, and the, the flexibility that it requires uh, to explore the many perspectives for doing that. One of the systems that has seemed like a black box uh, to many is big data and algorithms that currently run much of our lives and to me much more urgently are running science. So I decided to do something about that and my project here in uh, the Living Systems Collaboratory is, uh, is an attempt to uh, demystify and make tangible the intangible of big data. Um, and so Nico, I do want to share screen. So my, my project is called the Dataverse Holodeck, and it is a, uh, a project in this larger ongoing quest to organize the world's open data, to make it useful and accessible and not so scary to non-data scientists. So if you go to thedataoasis.com, there is now a tab with at least a starter explanation of this, um, this effort. And it is absolutely a direct name nod to my sci-fi fangirlness. I do mean holodeck in Star Trek kind of terms. Uh, in this case, an actual virtual space rather than a room on a Starfleet ship, but you never know. So the Dataverse holodeck 
is intended to build uh, next level experiential tools for human AI collaboration. And I know that doesn't exactly demystify it, but how about mixed reality, immersive experience of the dataverse, of big data, of the data that matters to depict and understand the systems that are inherent in the complex challenges we're here to solve. So climate, autoimmune disease, systemic racism, human trafficking, all of those are systems, complex systems that we have studied a lot and yet not solved. So I'm really interested in the last mile problems um, and understanding why they haven't been solved. So imagine if you could touch and feel big data in real time by stepping inside of it. That's why I'm working to build immersive visualizations of global systems data and a platform for researchers to push their work into this new frontier of experiential design. So one of my favorite researchers and current collaborator is Neo Martinez. Neo is one of the world's experts on food webs. So it would, it would give me such personal joy to create tools for the kind of work that he does. But he also is a great illustration of a, of a classic researcher who has done everything, used every tool, pushed every format to not only gather information, but to analyze it, to explain it, to re-explain it, to, to take the abstract and make it understandable by others, to use different language and mediums. So he literally has gathered the data, built the graphs, um, given the papers, push the limits of data visualization into animation and, of course, deep into algorithms. The Dataverse holodeck is what comes next. It is a piece of what comes next. It is certainly not the only experiential medium that will help push science forward. Um, as, as Neo says, we want to help take science from where it is to where it could be. And where it could be we believe is dimensional, collaborative, and fully sensory, right? Humans are amazing integrators of data, of massive amounts of data. Um, and we're very good at throwing a lot of it out so that we can step off the, off the step. Um, but we are still, we are, it, we're nothing short of incredible at connecting the dots and but in, the, in, the, in this century, in this high-tech time, as counterintuitive as it seems, we have become extremely logical, you know, sort of engineer, hierarchy, um, decision, linear, um, and we become hyper-visual. And we have so much more to bring to the sense-making um, game. So I'll just click here. For example, if you were sent this high-res photo of this beautiful tropical rainforest scene, you could study it for a long time. You could write papers about it. You could learn a lot. On the other hand, if you went and sat on that rock in the, in the, uh, in the middle of the pool, you would miss a lot of the things that were in, that are in the high-res photo, but you would have a completely other not only perspective, but sense of insights. You would, you would notice and feel very different things. What conclusions, what insights might you have, but at least back to critical thinking, that spark inquiry, that reframe the problem, that send your science or your soul, hopefully both, into different and expanded directions. So, Back to making demystifying data, making it alive. The, it is alive, right? You, if any of you have been watching the boat stuck in the Suez Canal, there are static graphs of where all the ships are being diverted to, and then there are live um, representation animations of where the world's shipping is going. That's real. That is a form of dimensionalizing data. 
uh, as opposed to seeing 3,722 ships are diverted. Seeing all those Legos zoom around the map is really compelling. So what, what, what might we discover? What might we notice? What, quest, what better questions might we ask if data and algorithms were dimensional? What insights into adjacent possibilities would, could happen with our full sensory array? I'll play this short video for you. It goes into a little more on sensory. Sense making. It's what humans do. It's time to have tools to make sense of big data and global living systems. But we need to go beyond explaining and look for new ways to explore the gray areas and to reveal adjacent possibilities. I'm completely inspired by the work of Natalie Maybach. She uses data to generate music and translates that into sophisticated basketry sculpture, creating metaphors and narratives which examine the inconsistencies in systems data in a unique emotional and tactile way. A great place to start would be to more fully engage human sensory and cognitive capabilities. Watch as this woman has to use all of those senses to be able to double dutch into this jump rope. It's easy to forget that humans truly are amazing. I believe that experiential design is the new frontier in sense making. It's time to see what insights are generated when our senses interact with data in new ways. My Dataverse Holodeck project builds directly on the work of folks like Eric Burlow and Rich Williams, ecologists slash data scientists. They often study complex natural ecosystems, which of course are icons of complexity. This is a representation of who eats whom in a particular lake. Computationally, the algorithm allowed them to sort the data in a spatial way, to see new patterns, to find new sense making. But it's time to push data visualization to the next level. It's time to put us in the middle of it. It's time to come full circle as humans and use all of our sensory, social, and cognitive gifts. Frankly, it's time for the next level in prototyping, which could be visceral, immersive, and interactive. What if we could step inside of Natalie's scores and sculptures? What if we could literally step inside an algorithm to engage with the relationships and interconnectedness they represent, to see the inconsistencies and have that prompt inquiry and discussion, to make sure that we as a species continue to ask the right questions. If we did, it might feel something like this. The goal of the Dataverse Holodeck project is to bring all of our unique ability to synthesize, to examine algorithms and data and to collaborate with AI to build new tools for solving complex systems challenges. The vision is to be part of the low code, no code movement and to link existing technologies uh, from gaming, mixed reality, yeah, um, data analytics, data visualization, and digital art fine art period into formats and frameworks to create aesthetic and interactive experiences to support complex problem solving, or more specifically interventions in those in, in complex systems. So when I talk about a holodeck, I am talking about a series of programs and teeing up the technology for you to bring your programs, your, your algorithms, your data challenges, and your sense of aesthetics. I'm committed to uh, building a few aesthetic uh, interpretations because I'm also very interested in how aesthetics 
uh, change your point of view. If I, if I painted things in dark, moody colors, do you see different things than in light colors? If, if the sound design is different, are you more apt to notice certain things? I can go way down the rabbit hole of, of the sensory uh, integration, but that's part of what I'm personally interested in. But I'm looking to build something that is for all sorts of you to bring your programs into this basic scaffolding, this hollow deck that you can run your own programs on. So Ken Dinsky, one of my personal heroes, um, and but one of his amazing at, uh, descriptors is that he paints music. And I feel that way when I look at his paintings. I want to step into those paintings. What would a climate hollow deck look like? This is what got me started on all of this in the first place is is the is, is, climate is so big and so overwhelming in some ways, uh, we need new ways to look at it. Again, this is all about being grounded in science and creating tools for science to go to the next level. Um, as Neo said, I have learned so much from Neo, uh, graphs really revolutionized scientific practice and helped them really reframe what they could explain and show and prove. And we think that this is the next, the next phase. Um, <laughs> we get to, we'll get to the place where Neo is inside his food web data and I can't, I can't wait to hear him shriek. <laughs> um, so here's a Dataverse mood board I am going to show you a couple of this. This one that is um, in, in the top of the queue is a tilt brush illustration, but it's a really interesting possibility of, of what kind of the Tron meets tilt brush vibe might feel like. It's one aesthetic, but it's only one. I'm going to show you two of the incredible things that my, uh, my friends and my cohort have designed. Peter Locken. Um, took just a sliver of my idea and ran with it and came up with this gorgeous piece uh, that you can visit in Mora. But it's a wonderful representation of what it might be like to have a dimensional sense of space and step into, um, step into the model, step into the algorithm. Isn't that magnificent? Here is another one. Here is a gorgeous digital collage that artist and friend Carlotta Aun made. And it's a, it's a fanciful metaphysical spin, but it is also compelling and could be data-based. So it's fascinating. They inspire me. I'm so grateful. But it's just a start. It's just a start of exploring. It could just as well be something more like this, right? Again, making data real, touchable, kinetic, could change everything. If you'd like to push the limits of technology and research into experiential design and, and what that means for science, um, please contact us at info at the data uh, You can also reach me on Twitter at, at Alora Brava. And just a special extra Shout out to Mansour Vakili, who has been uh, just, uh, you know, he's turned my mind inside out and just grateful to him on a whole bunch of levels. Um, and the design science studio team of Roxy, Amanda, Faith, and Nico, and my colleagues here. So thank you. All right, I can stop sharing, Nico. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it's a, such a fascinating project. Um, I have some questions for you, if that's okay. I'm excited about that. Um, I'd love to understand, um, given you know the, the, the multiple avenues that you've uh, walked uh, through your projects and, and, and your, um, your work, what was your understanding of living systems before getting into the lab and, and what it is now and what has been, how has that affected and, and changed 
uh, your work? I think I had a glib uh, kind of 10th grade science sense of everything is connected. I mean, I have an environmental studies degree, so maybe maybe it's a you know senior year undergrad perspective. But um, the the rigor um, and the expansiveness of what what Mansoor and what the collaboratory means by living systems, it's it's like those Russian nested dolls, right? It's more, there's always more. Um, and, you know, I, I, I knew about fractals, but I hadn't pulled those metaphors in. So what I knew is that I could make a chart and that there's circular systems and cycles and that the, everything's connected and there are patterns and complexity. And I kind of knew about Wolfram and, and, and complexity, but I, I really, I didn't, I didn't accept, I didn't mentally and emotionally accept that it is all living. <laughs> in, and not in a, I don't mean in a groovy woo-woo way, that's a separate conversation. I mean, actually moving in the same beat, in the same pattern, using the same building blocks that are just undeniable. Um, and I had a sense of the math and therefore the rhythm of the universe before this, but I hadn't pulled it all together to look at it all at once. So that's been, that's been seismic for my perspective on my work and my, it, it directly led to me re-examining the sensory side of, of what I want the, of what the holodeck could be and how it has to be designed. Because um, one of my concerns about really cool um, multimedia um, digital art, um, particularly remote, is that it's still too visual. I mean, it isn't that it's too visual, it's too visual centric. And it's not haptic, it's not kinetic. I mean, yes, it's, it gets better because people dance, it's starting to get there, but it's still kind of an, a party as opposed to rigor. I want to see what happens to that rave where you're dancing and you're learning something and you're in it and you're building, like what have you solved or what new, what new things are you going to turn around and work on tomorrow? Right. So it's, it's, it's early days, but uh, anyway, that's a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> well, you definitely need to talk to, to Jess who was here before yes. just trying to, to express living systems through dance and, and see how, how the, the intellectual part and the physical one merge uh, mm -hmm. in, a, in, in cohesion. Um, we have time for maybe one more minute. Uh, and um, yeah, I'd love for you to just do uh, a little little future casting and and maybe share with us in a minute or two. Uh, what do you see the the holodeck being in let's say fifteen years? if you needed to, to imagine where it can be? I think that we have to take advantage of the, um, the perspective shift that the pandemic has, has given us um, to, to, to squeeze in under the door of funding and of, of, of receptiveness, efforts to to, to at least get some percentage of folks uh, looking at different ways to look at big problems. And so this is just one comprehensive tool. And I see, because I see it linking existing technologies, taking the very coolest advances uh, in gaming and data and, and right, in library science and information architecture and art, all of these things, I, I see it as constantly evolving. And in the same way that we see ex incredible experimentation, like we've seen with other presenters this week, of uh, display and art and museum art and all of that, right? If, if, you, if you take the, the same tools are getting, I'm, if I'm working on the lab side, there are others with way more talent than me working on the, the explain community engagement. So I, I, 
I really do hope that this becomes a commonplace must stop um, for critical algorithms to get their tires kicked earlier, right? We all hear about algorithm bias or AI bias and things like that. Um, if I, my, my, my real hope, and I certainly don't know yet, um, is that this is one of the things that can help spot that much, much earlier and hopefully solve a lot of, uh, or, 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 or help um, stop a bunch of big mistakes. So that's what I think will happen. I think I like more and more experiential, I think we will have experiential science. Which is resisting. Yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, well, with that, thank you, Laura, uh, for being here. Thank you for being part of the collaboratory and, and for bringing your important work into the world. Um, we're going to close the stream and we're going to start a new one in about four minutes. Uh, Thank you, uh, everybody, for tapping in. Uh, this is the Living Systems Collaboratory Spotlight uh, of this Saturday. We have one more uh, presenter to go today, and we're going to have some more uh, tomorrow. Um, so just wait a few minutes and tap back in. Uh, we're having somebody ultra interesting coming up. Uh, hi.